Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out-of-this-world story from our space. My wife cheated on me with her boss, and I'm thinking about revenge. Updates. These are the events of the worst day of my life. My wife, my confidant, my best friend, the person that I thought would be there for me no matter what, became my enemy that day. My wife hated me and wasn't afraid to tell me that day. Hours, days before, she wouldn't have dared to tell me that she hated me. I was confused and I did not understand what was happening. On that day, I felt like a child whose parents were abusing them and all they wanted was to be loved. To summarize things, my wife called the police on me, left the home that we picked out and purchased together, left our children, and then she went to have sex with and spend the night with another man. We had been married for 10 years and had two children together. At the time, I did not know that's what was transpiring. As I sat broken in the home that we built together, I began putting the pieces together. I knew what was happening. In all honesty, I had known for weeks, but I had refused to admit it to myself. The signs were all there, but I gave her the benefit of the doubt and I refused to see what was happening right in front of my face. The only issue is at that point, I didn't know with whom it was happening. I thought I was with her friend, male, from work, but it turned out to be her boss. She did an excellent job of hiding in plain sight and throwing me off of her trail. Her lies mixed with the trust that I had in her made it hard for me to pinpoint what was going on. All I knew was that my marriage was unraveling in front of me and I was scared. I felt helpless. Little did I know, I really was helpless. Not only did two of the worst things imaginable happen to me, but I almost threw my life away that night as well. I waited outside of her place of employment from midnight until 7am the next morning on the person that I thought she had spent the night with. I was thinking with pure anger and pain. I was so hurt by the one person that I thought would never hurt me that nothing in life mattered to me at that point. I look back and I am so thankful for the way the events of the following morning transpired. Had any choices been made different, I could possibly be writing this from a 10 by 10 cell. The day that turned out to be the worst day of my life had been building for many months. By the time I realized what was happening, it was already too late to stop the train that was already in motion. My wife had already been with this other man sexually multiple times by this point. She had already fallen for him. She did not have a plan of how to move forward, but she was certain that she didn't want me anymore. In my heart and mind, I searched for what I had done to deserve this. Even though it has been months, I can still remember that day like it was yesterday. We got into an argument over nothing. She pushed every button I had until I grew frustrated and angry. She called the police. They arrived and then she left and went to another man's house. I did not see her until the next morning. To add insult to injury, today I was searching for study music to download. I have to download music in advance because a lot of time the connection in my study room is too slow to stream. Well, as I'm searching, I came across her favorites playlist. It's a reminder and a blueprint to what was going on with my wife and how she felt. Looking at the songs and the timeline, the lyrics hurt like a mother effer. The first liked song of the affair era on her favorites list was Love Bites by Def Leppard. From there, if you're looking at it from the perspective of a betrayed husband, it only gets worse. Martin Vide, Poison, and then we get to Love is in the Dark. Further up the list, we get to the song by Paya Mia, Let's Do It Again, where she's talking about her one night stand and how she wants to do it again. Then I see Just a Kiss. I imagine this song was favorited around the time that my wife had her first kiss with another man that wasn't me. It's painful to see to be honest. I can look back and realize that this had progressed and that was the moment when I should have started seeing things, but I didn't. I honestly should have seen things long before this point. From that point forward, my wife is no longer mine. Her thoughts, emotions, feelings were all geared toward another man. As the playlist gets to the song Tomorrow by Chris Young, I don't know if that song was saved for me on her mind or with him on her mind, but the lyrics, tonight I'm gonna love you like there's no tomorrow, leads me to believe that she was thinking about him. As the playlist continues, I could tell that my wife's feelings and opinion of me were changing. Initially, she was awestruck with her new interest, so that's the focus of the songs. The Affair Era playlist started with lust and excitement, but as time went on, it got sadder. I could see in the music what my wife was feeling. She was hating me. She was thinking that I was different now. She was over me and she was wanting things back to the way they used to be. She was done with me. The music tells the tale. The thing is, I hadn't changed. No more so than people do in long relationships. What was changing was her view of me. 
and it was a warped view because of her affair. She was convincing herself that I was a horrible person, a horrible husband, that I didn't love her. This was the furthest from the truth, but it's what she needed to tell herself to be able to keep up her affair. My wife changed her hairstyle, which she had not done in over a decade. My wife began wearing makeup, which she had never done. She bought perfume. The other change, which I didn't notice, was that she began paying less attention to me. She started being angrier toward me. I was losing, and eventually lost her. She told me on the day that we got married that she would love me forever, but it wasn't true. On that day, I realized she did not love me. I don't doubt whether she once did because I believe that she once did, but on that day, it was gone. She was daydreaming about another man. She was fantasizing about him. She wanted to be with him when she was with me. When we were together, she wanted to talk to him. When she needed a shoulder to cry on or someone to talk to, she ran to him and not me. Update. Should I fake it? What's love got to do with it? So last year, I was cheated on by my wife, who I had been married to for a decade. I discovered her infidelity close to a year ago. She had a months-long affair with her boss, which culminated with them sleeping together multiple times. Flash forward to today. I have a very good job that I love, but it requires that I travel extensively. Most of the time, it's just a week or two a month. However, a recent project has required that I be out of the country for a couple of months. This project is not complete, and I am a few days away from returning home. The issue is that for the first time in nearly a decade and a half that I have known my wife, I am not excited to see her. I am actually regretting having to see her. I really don't miss her. I miss the comfort of my home, the comfort of having someone to be affectionate with, but I don't miss her. I miss our children tremendously though. The time away from the kids we have together is agonizing. I have been playing in my head what activities I will do with them when I get home to make up from being, being away. So the question is, should I fake my love for her? If I fake it, will I eventually feel it for real? Before discovering her affair, she was my world. I viewed her as if she hung the stars. She could do no wrong. Now I question everything she says. I get knots on my stomach when I give her compliments that are expected from a husband. Before I left for these few months, I did not feel this way. I was extremely hurt. I still am. Confused, sad, bewildered, lost even. Now I just seem to be more mad than anything else. Mad at her for being so selfish. Mad at myself for wanting to work it out after the ultimate betrayal. How can I move forward and ever be happy with her again? I desperately want to be happy. I want our marriage to work. I don't believe in divorce. When I said I do, I meant it. I want to be a good role model for my children and to show them what commitment really is. My parents married in their 20s and stayed married until the day they died. I'm also scared of the unknown, scared of losing everything that I have built over the years. I'm scared of having to restart. And then I'm pissed. I'm pissed at her for messing everything up. Pissed at her for putting me in a position of having to sacrifice my moral and ethical code to be with someone. Pissed at her for putting me in a position to potentially have to start over. I don't love her right now. Should I stay and fake it until I do? Will I ever love her again? On the flip side, the distance seems to have made her grow much fonder of me. She seems to be in a better place and seems to be genuinely in love with me again. However, when she says things like, I will love you forever. It's all I can do to not remind her that she already broke that promise once. Update. She's doing everything right, but I still want to be mad. It's been two years since my wayward spouse started her affair. In the immediate discovery of her affair, we both made all kinds of mistakes and caused each other more trauma than necessary. Recently, last 12 months or so, she's been doing everything right. Her attitude is different. She checks in. She calls. She plans family outings and then just couples outings. She isn't angry all the time. Her approach to disagreements is to try and see my side before she reacts. If I'm being honest with myself, she is doing everything right, now anyway. I still, however, find myself mad to the point of telling myself that I hate her throughout the day. Where I used to brag to my coworkers about how awesome my wife was, now I never mention her to anyone, and when a thought pops into my head that's positive about her throughout the day, I can't shake that voice in my head that says, I hate that blank. I am worried that this self-talk is affecting our recovery but I don't know how to silence it. When I drive past the place that she worked during the affair, her affair was with her boss. I can't help but get filled with rage. For a period, we were doing really well with her recovery. We were getting back on track, but recently this anger is really affecting me. I'm mad with myself for begging her to stay with me after discovering her affair. Even typing it now makes me feel like less of a man. I am angry that I was able to be so affected by another human. I'm angry that the one person that I trusted more than anyone else on this planet betrayed me. 
and I'm angry that I have lost faith in humanity as a whole. I know this is the as one after infidelity subreddit, but I desperately need help with this anger and with what I'm feeling. I want to be as one with my spouse again, but internally I have a ton of conflict that's keeping me from getting there. I'm almost two years post D-Day, and I can say that I have literally thought about her affair every single day since discovery. Please help. Ask for help and you're going to get it. Here's a message from a throwaway account. I'm a wayward spouse, so have no moral authority here. But I was watching a comedy special of all things the other night, and the comic said something to me that really resonated. She said, We learn from the part of the story that we focus on. When you think so much about your wife's affair, you keep relearning the same lesson. That she's capable of doing terrible things to you. That nothing's the same. That she hurt you so much. I know how it feels almost impossible not to think about those things, and there are so many triggers. But perhaps trying consciously to refocus your thoughts every time you start thinking about what went wrong to thinking about what she's doing right, and how much she wants to be with you, and how much she's trying to grow and be a better person for you. And when you think about how gullible or humiliated you feel, think about how strong and brave and committed to love you are for trying to make this work. Focus on the parts of your story that you want to learn from and take with you into the future. I think what you want to learn from this is that your marriage is so important and your love for each other is so strong that you're both willing to wade through all kinds of pain and crap to make it work and come out stronger. That is an amazing marriage. That's the story you want to focus on. Update. Cheating and the trauma afterwards. Worse than war trauma. I'll start by saying that my wife had an affair with her boss at work three years ago. I remember the day down to the second when I found out what was happening. With that said, I will also add that I am a combat veteran with 19 years of service and 6 plus years in combat zones. The trauma from war pales in comparison to dealing with my wife's affair. I was prepared, somewhat, for war. I went through it with friends. I knew that no matter how bad things got, I'd either be dead or I'd have people there to get through the suck with me. Even once I get back, talking about my experiences to friends or therapists is no issue. Dealing with my wife's affair has been about the opposite of that, as things can get. It has been completely isolating. I can't talk about it with a family or friends. For one, they'd wonder why I'm still with her and how someone who is so outwardly strong and successful as I am would stick around after her affair. Next is the fact that it's completely emasculating. The entire experience made me feel lower than whale dung at the bottom of the ocean. Next is that I'm just sad all the time now. The person who was my rock for so long, the person that I trusted with my deepest, darkest secrets, the person that was the stability that I needed to be successful and honestly to stay alive in combat deceived me. Not just deceived me, but betrayed my trust in the worst possible way imaginable. In the past, when I was at my lowest points in life, my confidant was my wife. Now, she is the person that has caused me to be at my lowest point, and she is the person I want to talk to. But I can't, because she is the one that caused this to begin with. I know I'm just ranting now, but I'd spend the rest of my life in combat to not have to deal with the torture of my wife cheating. I can unequivocally say that this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me in my life. I know I should just get over it and move on, but I don't know how. I'm not a crier, but I lay awake at nights with tears rolling down my face and there's no one I can tell, no one I can talk to. It's honestly a miserable experience. Update. Not a revenge affair, but an affair to understand. Long story short, it's been four years almost to the day since D-Day. I travel pretty regularly for work, and I'm on a work trip to an exotic destination about 4,000 miles away from home. I'm a pretty fit guy, and since I've gotten my self-esteem back, I've been decently outgoing on social settings. This has all resulted in a ton of female attention. I'm a married man, so normally, I just take it in stride and keep moving. However, recently, all I've been thinking about is how I should do it too. I seem to keep running into women that want NSA fun. It doesn't help that I've been living in a hotel in an exotic vacation locale. I want to know what it feels like too. I don't just want to even the score, I want to know what she got out of it. I want the feeling of excitement, lust, etc too. The other problem is, I don't just want to let my guard down and have an affair. I want to tell my wayward spouse about it. I know at that point I will become the wayward spouse as well. I know it's wrong, but my wayward spouse already desecrated our vows. She already broke our agreement, so why shouldn't I be able to do the same? I only get one life and the fairy tale is now over. I will never be able to have one marriage where both partners are faithful until the day they die. At this point, I'm just robbing myself of happiness, and I ask myself, for what? 
Let's see what other comments we got on this story. Badger Brush 20 says, Just read your previous posts. You want to stay together for what? You are torturing yourself. You are staying together for the kids in your vows? You never broke the vows. She did. What example are you setting for the kids? How to be miserable and unhappy and sucking it up for what? If your child came to you with your story, what advice would you give them? You say your wife is doing the right steps. Does she know how you feel? Someone wrote once in a post that when he asked his wife for a divorce and with a similar story to yours, she didn't want to sign and wanted to work on things. He told her that imagine your wife chops off your leg. The doctors reattach the leg and the wife is sorry and for years with therapy etc you learn to walk again. Great, fine. But every time you take a step with a leg that can never be 100% healed, there is a little limp or pain. Every time they take a step, he is reminded of what she did. She did love him enough to ask for the pen. This is you. You are beating yourself up and feeling guilty for not being happy and miserable to not move on after infidelity. Sorry. There is people out there who won't cheat and love you, and you will wonder why you didn't leave sooner. Our closing thought comes from Claustrophobic. It is a revenge affair, not a revenge on her, but to yourself. You want revenge on the old sap you used to be who believed you fell in love with someone that wouldn't betray you. That guy was pathetic, low self-esteem and weak, but this new you that gets all the attention feels good about himself and actually has the opportunity to play the same game she did. You can also experience the rush and thrill of cheating that she did. The new you may be a lot better than the old you, but he wants repentance. It doesn't sound like you want to cheat for the thrill or the lust, but exclusively for the hurt. You want her to hurt the way the old you hurt, but at what point does it stop? Because if you do this and don't divorce her, you're dragging each other through hell, and if she divorces you, she hits a lot harder since it's your infidelity that will be the cause. Doubt anyone listens to what happened four years ago since you took her back. You're a good guy. Divorce is okay. It doesn't lessen your value. It doesn't hurt the kids. You don't have to drag everyone through hell to get to heaven.